Hi, I'm Chris Dinojian, Chief Engineer for DrumChannel.com. Now, in our last video, we talked about effectively miking a drum set and getting a great sound right out of the gates. So today, we're going to move on to a live band setup. We brought in some special guests, but most importantly, we're going to hear some great music. Let's get started. With the band, Stephen Perkins on drums, and Richie Gajate Garcia on percussion, we've got some great musicians here. Let's go ahead and talk about the drum setup. In the first two videos, I went into miking a drum kit effectively, and today I'm using the same setup on Stephen's kit. Let's take a look. So here's the mic setup for the drum. A D6 on the kick drum, I5 mics on the snares, SCX1C for the hi-hat, micro Ds, D2s, and D4s for the toms, and a lovely pair of SCX 25As for the overheads. So I think with every instrument, there's a personality and a voice. And if you can connect with that and have a conversation with it, then you've got this relationship with your drums. If you can capture the noise of the instrument after the musician learns how to play it, that's the relationship you get with the microphone and the engineer and all the gear that keeps on rotating in that massive engine room. On percussion, I used micro Ds for the congas, a D6 under the djembe, two ADX 51s for area miking, and an SCX 25A as a mono overhead. There's times when I've played and I hear the drums when I play it, and then I go to, to let's say, to listen to, to maybe a recording or something. I go, wow, are those my drums? Uh, you know, but there are times when I go like, wow, are those my drums? You know, so it depends on the quality of, of uh, the, the uh, sound that's, that, uh, shall we say, the microphones that are being used, but also on the sound of the instrument itself. Another thing that's very important though on the sound is your technique on the instrument. Because if you don't know how to get a proper sound out of an instrument, it doesn't matter how good the instrument is, it's not gonna sound that good, so. Now those two make it look really easy. Let's go ahead and move on so you can see how simple this band setup is. On bass, I simply used a D6 on the cabinet. And I like to start with placing the mic in the middle of the cone. This usually gives me a good balanced tone as well. Now sometimes I'll even angle it a little bit, and that depends on the size of the speaker. As you can see though, I placed it as far away as I could from the drums, and that kind of helps with the bleed in this live setup. The guitar is another perfect simple setup, and I just used an I-5 on that. I placed the I-5 about a half an inch from the grill cloth, pointing at the center of the speaker cone at a slight angle. If you're using one mic, this is a good place to start, and you can play with the placement a little bit to change your tone. The organ had a rotary speaker system, so I used a D6 at the bottom of the cabinet, and that captured the bass tone. I also used an I5 for the top end. Now these two mics isolate very well in this live situation. Let's go ahead and take a listen. Now last but not least, the vocals and harmonica. We used an OM7, which is a really versatile mic. It's great for a live situation like this because it has a tight pattern, so it's really resistant to feedback. Hey, you know 
Many of the so-called live videos that you've seen are not really live at all, but recorded. Capturing live sound is a completely different animal. There's no overdubs here. Now, as you can see, a simple setup like this can be very, very effective. But you're gonna wanna experiment on your own time as well. Of course, it helps to have a great band in the house. So I'd like to say thanks to the band for coming out and playing for us. And for more information on Audix microphones, you're gonna wanna go to audixusa.com. Let's hear some music. <laughs>